I'm Chris Palosinski, President and CEO of Land O'Lakes. I've spent my entire career in the food industry, about half that time uh, with Land O'Lakes, a member-owned company, and about half that time with investor-owned companies uh, like Kraft General Foods or Pillsbury. I want to let everybody know that there is uh, what I call a great untold productivity story in American agriculture going on, and it, it needs to continue. Uh, the productivity story itself is pretty simple. Uh, since the 1930s, uh, American farmers have had a dramatic increase in output with really no increase in inputs. Uh, right now we're growing uh, two and a half times more output, the value of all crops, livestock, dairy production, with the same amount of inputs that we had in the 1930s, uh, the value of all land, seed, fertilizer. That's important for a variety of reasons. Uh, first, we've created more food to feed more people. Uh, farmers have gone from every one farmer feeding 10 people in the 1930s to every one farmer today feeding 150 or more people. It also has resulted in much lower cost food. We've gone from a society in the 1930s that spent about a quarter of our income as a society on food to one that spends well less than 10% on food and that now includes half of our food coming from sources away from home. Ironically, one of the other things that's occurred though is we've gone from a society that uh, almost a quarter of all Americans in the 30s were involved somehow in agriculture to one where today less than 2% of society is involved in agriculture. So there's this tremendous productivity story going on, uh, more output with the same amount of inputs. Uh, it's a great sustainability story, it's a great economic story, uh, and it's a great story about being able to feed more people. It needs to continue uh, because we're soon going to have a lot more people on the planet. Population is going to go uh, from 6.5 billion or so today to over 9 billion by 2050. Nearly a 40% increase in population. And good news is that diets are improving, uh, so we're going to have to see even more food uh, produced to serve more people. So we're going to have to increase food production between now and 2050 by something like 70%, maybe even more, essentially doubling food output. So this productivity story I talked about, uh, more food with the same amount of inputs, has to continue. Uh, it's a very important story uh, for not just America, but for the world. What could derail agricultural productivity? You know, that's a great question. What could derail this great productivity story? And, and it relates to the 98%, 2% that I spoke about earlier. Um, if you think about uh, society in the 30s, where a quarter of all America was involved some way with agriculture, if you had a question of where your food came from, you were able to talk about it around the dinner, dinner table or ask a trusted aunt or uncle or a trusted neighbor or friend. Today, with less than 2%, the number is actually closer to 1.4% of Americans farming, 98-plus uh, percent of America really doesn't know where their food comes from. So that gives rise to a lot of concern about production techniques. And sometimes nostalgia, um, a political opinion, emotion, uh, can overrule facts and science. And one of the things that's, a, that's very important is we allow facts and science to kind of rule what we do in food production and in agriculture. Uh, because that has been the underlying driver of the great productivity story I talked about earlier. The two drivers of this great productivity that we've seen since the 1930s are our first uh, adoption of modern business practices on farms. Farms got bigger. Farms were able to employ capital, not just labor. And secondly, the adoption of safe, proven technology. And in today's world, um, in agriculture, not so much other industries, big is somehow perceived as is bad or scary, and technology is, is kind of scary as well. And we need to make sure that decisions about agriculture are driven by facts and science, not a potion or a nostalgia. If we do that, we, continue, we can continue this great productivity story uh, and produce enough food in the next 35 years or so to feed the soon-to-be 9 billion people on the planet. If we don't, uh, it's going to be a struggle. And by the way, this productivity story is also a sustainability story. Um, it is about driving more food production with fixed or even lower inputs. Uh, for example, today in corn, we're growing six and a half times more corn on 13% fewer acres than we did in 1930. Great productivity story, great about output, but it's also a sustainability story which we're going to have to focus on as we feed a very hungry planet.